Maka's Guides. <laughs> Chapter 5 is another lengthy one with quite a few collectibles, but we'll get started by walking forward and following our allies here. Much this place as the fire and sharp rocks should be dust. Something cold is here. Something cold is here. Something special. See. See. This place is different. You see. see. We have a message for you. We give you this moment as we. As your allies disappear, just keep following the main path. There is really only one way to go. Just around the corner here, there will be two collectibles to grab, including a face as well as a lore stone. So let me show you them. As it opens up here, you'll see that there is a waterfall on your right hand side that kind of comes out of the side of the cliffs. You may even notice that there's a lore stone directly in front of you. But ignore it for now because there is a collectible that's even closer. As you reach the ravine, look to the right hand side to find the face, revealing the tree inside. Make sure you grab that before you move on to the lore stone. From this tree, let's go ahead and grab that lore stone, follow back up to the main path, taking a right hand turn to go up the hill. At the top of the hill, it's not obvious, but there is a fork in the road. Make sure you hook around to the right in order to take this somewhat hidden path. This will lead you to kind of behind the waterfall, and that's where you can access the lore stone. You'll end up right above the tree collectible that we just grabbed. Also, at any point, you're also free to press up on that D-pad to use photo mode. This is quite a beautiful chapter, visually. The Scald's verse tells how Grettir made many enemies with his proud and overbearing nature. Always quick to anger, his strength and fighting prowess meant that even the most trivial of quarrels met a fatal end. The kinsmen of those he killed or maimed were angry. And because he was an outlaw, no one was allowed to help him. From the lore stone, rejoin the path using the cliff here and the ledge, and then follow that path until the next section. Guiding the Björk to our door, but she knows them. Is this what you've been reduced to? How does she know them? Why does she hate them? Let him go! No. Who is this woman? Ostrid. This is not what you think. She will what? Kill she will slit his throat. What is it? I know this is going to be hard to believe, but you have to listen. This woman here, Senua, she knows how to defeat the giants. We've 
All of us, we've, we've seen she it. She has to trust us. Boss, make her trust us. She will believe you. Impossible, they can't be killed. We thought so too, but we saw it. We saw it, those three. We're on our way to Borka Virkinau to tell the Kodi, to make him understand that we, we can fight back. He's telling the truth. I did not ask you that. Shut up. I know you have no love for the Bjork, but you can't trust me. Will she? This is the turning point, Austrian. We can start over, start to rebuild what we had. I should trust Parker now. If this is true. Yes. She believes you. She wants to believe you. She's trying to understand. If. This is true. You, Senor, tell me now. Look at her. Say it is she true. She's exhausted. You can speak. She wants to believe you. Speak to her. She tell wants her. to trust you. Tell her the truth. It is true. She will believe us. She knows. She can see that we bring hope. We do. Okay. Prove it then. There's a giant. Here. Another giant. Another giant. He roams the beaches and sinks our boats, cutting us off from the sea. More death. And we're close to running out of food. More darkness. We can help these people. We can overcome it. Kill it. We need to get to Borgavi. Please. Remember, there are other people we must save. I cannot let more of my people die. Don't get distracted. We should kill it. Taken down one, but there is a whole land of them. We need the practice. People will die if you help them. People and will I die if you don't. There's no way you can win. Please, Senor. People will die if you stay here. We are dying. People will die if you don't. You have to help her. Now it is time to lead, Senor. Now you have to choose. You can feel it. All right. We will help. Our people are so quick to. Harald, she is like. Take them to the settlement and keep an eye on the Bjark. We want to help her. We can trust her. Senor, come with me. Trust us. Trust her. I will show Astrid. you the giant. In this loneliest place, she has found others. Lost in darkness, just like she was. Others who might look to her to lead them into the light. Can her shoulders bear this burden? She so learned to keep her guard up, can she ever let it down? You are an outlander. So now we have a new quote unquote ally. Uh, we didn't meet under the best circumstances, but for now we are joined together and we're going to do them a favor of defeating one of the giants that is basically ruining their village. And hopefully as a return favor, they will let us go. We're going to run up and do this walk and talk section. But as we round this corner to the right hand side, there will be a squeeze through a couple of rocks. There is, however, a face collectible to the right-hand side just before you reach this area. So let's make sure we grab it before we go through. If you do go through, it's not a big deal. There is a chapter select for this checkpoint that is only about 30 seconds ago, so you can always come back and mop up in a bit. She wants to help. In the heart of the Northlands, they know the storms are born of the Oshkuredi, the hunt of Odin. 
the huntsmen ride horses with eyes of fire. Their weapons clash like thunder, and it is best to hide inside, lest your spirit be called to join them. All right, and from here we can rejoin that main path and squeeze through the rocks in order to follow our ally towards their giant problem. You can sprint here just to make them move a little bit more quickly, but there is a little bit of a maximum speed here just because it's trying to progress the story a little bit. And there is also an upcoming lore stone pretty close by. Storms with him. The cry is born on the storm. Where is he? We haven't seen the sun in weeks. And with winter upon us, the storms will only get worse. They are running out of time. It's too late. They will die, all of them. Come. Bartlebeek's just over there. He is calling to us. My brothers used to come here to practice fighting. Sneak out. Follow them. She's a fighter, I think. Learning by watching. Yeah. They're dead now. I'm all that's left. She is alone. Who do you have? No. You only have us. She has us. We're here. We're always here. What about your family? It's just me left. Don't tell her. What anything. happened to them? Don't tell her. You can't tell her. So no, I can't trust her. She might understand. She won't. No one will understand. No one knows what it's like to be you. Don't tell her about your mother. She will turn from you. Turn from us. What about your mother? They always do. My mother was a fighter. She never gave up. A fighter up. like her. Not even at the very end. So strong. She is not giving up. <laughs> My As you come down this ledge right here, you may have spotted a lore stone, although it's quite difficult to see. You'll follow this path and then come up this ledge into this next area. Your ally will continue forward and to the left, but if you take a quick peek to your right, you may see that lore stone just barely poking up over the hill in front of you. You can't walk directly towards this one. You do have to take the path that goes kind of around and to the right. If you follow here, you'll come through a small hole in the rocks, allowing you to go under. This will allow you to go to the lore stone and interact with it. And after it, you'll have to just backtrack your steps to get back to that main path. The outlaw Gretir fled to the island of Drangi. His enemies knew he was there, but he was still so strong and fierce, nobody could shift him. Thorbjorn, first among his foe, sent his foster mother to see Gretir. She was a Saithkona, and very wily. She enchanted a tree branch and sent it to wash up on Drangi. Gretir tried to cut it up for firewood, but his axe flew back and struck him in the leg. The wound blackened and festered, and Gretir feared his time was close.
We used to have an easier passage up. We don't Excuse have the tools me. to make repairs. Can you climb this? They built this. Yes. They made a place to live. Let's go back lines like it's nothing. You must follow. She knows this place so well. She understands it. She loves this place. Even now, even after all of that, she leads the people here. Father, was he the leader here? Yes. He was the best of men. A leader like your father. No, a leader like you. Not like your father. He was just generous and kind. Too kind. Too kind? What does she mean? He trusted the wrong person. And he was betrayed. Traitor? Who? Try to follow his footsteps. She wants to keep her people safe. She has to. But it's hard. She has to carry on for her father. What about you, Samuel? Sometimes it's best not to follow too closely. What do you mean? Her. You can trust her. My father was a leader too, but not like yours. Coming into this next area does begin a combat section. Interestingly enough, our ally will run away and we will get separated temporarily. There are only a few enemies here from my memory, so let's make quick work of them. After the combat section, let's go ahead and just follow the path here. There is a little bit of a watchtower, which you can take a step onto if you want to see the areas that are coming up and the landscapes, take a cool photo. But if you're just looking to make some progress, you can jump down the ledge and head into the next area. Here you will notice some of that rainbow filter on some of these rocks, meaning that there is likely a puzzle to be done here. As you approach the exit, it will get locked up. A symbol will present itself that looks kind of like a bunch of sixes. And now we have to find the three symbols to open up this door. This can be a little bit tricky, but if you just wander around long enough, you'll figure it out. The first one I'd recommend going for is this one kind of directly behind us. What you want to do is interact with the orb to your left. This should shift a large amount of the world, including the rocks behind us. And we can now go into this area. And we're trying to make these symbols using the kind of yellow moss that's growing on the rocks here. So the first symbol can be found right here somewhere. Next up, let's continue down this path a little bit. And interact with this secondary orb over here. After using that orb, you should now be able to continue down the path we were on. You will kind of be locked in here, so there's only one way to go. But we are behind the rocks that separate us from the area we were in earlier. At the end of the path, you should be able to line up some of the yellow moss to make our second piece of the symbol. 
at this point you should be able to turn around and we're going to head back into the area we kind of started in so we can go ahead and interact with the closest orb which should bring us back into the center of the area and then as you round the corner and go through the mist you can interact with the orb here to generate a ramp that lets you stand on the platform in the very center you can then come up this ramp look to your left to line up some of that moss creating the final part of the symbol with all three parts of the symbol created, the door should now be able to open. And luckily for us, there is also a collectible just past this door. Approach it, and it should, I believe, automatically open up. And after you come through, let's keep an eye out on the right-hand side for a face. I believe it's down the hill here and slightly around the corner. As you come around the corner, keep your eye out on the right-hand side to find one of the more obvious collectible locations in the game in my opinion although uh, they're all kind of equally difficult this one does have a longer path towards the tree technically you don't need to interact with the tree for this collectible type to count but i would highly recommend it because then you can actually keep track of what you have and what you've missed They know that the Kylith, the Hag of Winter, is the one who hurls sleet and snow upon the land. She lives in a sea rock and rules the waves of the roiling winter ocean with her blackthorn staff. She strikes the ground to destroy the shoots of growing green, so the winter will lie long and low on the land. I believe with this one completed, we only have five collectibles left, three of them being hidden face baths and two of them being the lore stones. Of course, I will show you where they are as we get there, but for now, you can rejoin that main path and continue forward. You should rejoin your ally pretty soon here, and then there will be one of the probably most complicated puzzles in the game coming up. The Draugar don't usually come this close to the settlement. The Triga. I have to warn them. Your followers too. They're here as well. They're not my followers. I just showed them how things could be different. But they follow you. She was weak. Well, she left us. Maybe one day Don't I can also see how things can be different. We need to find the hidden folk. Find them. You're not coming? There's something I need to find. Bardavik is just along the shore. I would say be careful of the She needs to understand. Find a way. She can't handle herself. You are a warrior, Simba. She left as soon as it was hard. Why did the dragon come back? What were they looking for? Were they following us? Yes, they must be following us. We'll then come to the shoreline with the wrecked ships over here. We'll just try to make forward progress. We will be locked out, but it will start our next puzzle. During this puzzle, you can also grab two very tricky collectibles. One of them maybe being the hardest face in the entire game. So let's go ahead and come to the shoreline and try to go through this cave with a blue light nearby. Unfortunately, we will be locked out from going, but if we are able to focus on the door, we'll see the three symbols we need in order to open it. So let's go ahead and backtrack to where we drop down from and head up back onto that ledge. There is now an orb that we can interact with near the shoreline that should alter the world and transform certain rocks. So after climbing up this ledge, take a left-hand turn. You should be able to cross this bridge because of the transformation and it being the default one. And this will allow you to interact with the orb by the shoreline to change the rocks next to us. As we come around this corner, look to your left and you should be able to line up a couple of posts in yellow in order to unlock your first of the three symbols nearby we can also find our two pretty well hidden collectibles follow around the bend and then drop down into the next area you may notice that kind of in front of us there's a ledge to the right we're going to ignore that even though that's where we're supposed to go and if you follow that ledge to the left there is a bridge that is not active you can use the orb to generate that bridge, but behind that bridge, we can find two collectibles. So instead of activating the orb, let's head through there. We'll find a small crack in the rocks. 
which you may see as you're using the bridge itself, but it can be a little bit tricky to notice and you may not know you're supposed to go here. After you come through here, you'll end up in a cave, go to the end of the pathway, and there should be the 17th out of 18 lore stones. You may also notice some yellow symbols up here, which mean we'll have to align those for the door. This is our second to last lore stone. The scalds say Grettir, wounded by Sather, was now so weak it was possible for his enemies to defeat him. Under cover of night, Thorbjorn and his men attacked his shelter. They tried to disarm him, but he clung so firmly to his sword, Kar's loom, that they had to cut off his arm to get it free. Then they used his sword to cut off his head, and the land's mightiest outlaw was dead. Now there's also an extremely well-hidden face path here. If you turn around and head out, it might be obvious because I've told you it's about to show up, but it's in front of you as you're leaving. It's amazing how if you don't know you're looking for it, your eyes will make sure you don't see it. But as you're leaving, make sure you grab this tree as well. These people know that the sea god, Ran, sets out nets to trap sailors and drag them to her world. She sends the waves, her daughters, to wreck boats, so she will have more men to take. And jealously, she pulls them down beneath the water. All right, and then from this collectible, we can head back through that cave, take a left-hand turn to end up back where we came from. After we do squeeze through the rocks, we will have to eventually interact here with the orb. So come through the rocks and keep to the left. You'll notice the ledge here. We're going to actually climb the ledge first. We're going to go through the blue mist so that we're not blocked. And only after we pass this blue mist should we interact with the orb to transform and create a bridge for ourselves. With that being said, you won't be able to reach the orb all the way by the shoreline. There will be a new orb that appears pretty much directly in the opposite direction. So use that orb instead, and this should create a bridge for us in order to move to the next section and grab the second part of the symbol here. At the end of the path, the symbol should be somewhat obvious, but we will have to do another orb here in order to move the rocks that are blocking our path. This will allow us to climb up a ledge. And you'll know you're close when you see the floating icons of red and the symbol nearby. You want to line up the yellow. So you'll see that there is some yellow here in the middle, but there's also some yellow here in the ruins. So let's head inside the ruins to try to line up these markings to create the correct symbol. We are now two thirds of the way done with the door solution and the third solution or third symbol it's pretty much on the opposite end of the beach, so let's take a minute to backtrack our steps to where we came from. As you come down this ledge, though, you will have to interact with the orb near the shoreline in order to unblock the path that will be around this corner for us. Only after you jump down the next ledge and pass the rock blocks, once you're blocked again, should you interact with the orb, this time on the opposite side, to unblock your path. You should now be able to backtrack your way almost all the way back to the door. You need to know the truth. She needs to know the truth. You have to find it out. What is the truth? Maybe he needs you. So many truths. Maybe she should just help us. Help us. Ignore the orb until you go through the blue mist. Once you're blocked because there is no bridge for you to go across, interact with the orb to generate yourself a bridge. Turn to the right to look towards the door, and we'll have to head behind this giant shipwreck 
that is kind of directly in front of us as we drop down. The path will be blocked here for us, so we will have to interact with the orb uh, at the shoreline in order to move the rocks behind this shipwreck. So now that we have shifted into the upside down world, go behind the ship, and now we can go up these ledges, which were previously blocked by rocks. Once behind the ship, though, you do have to interact with the orb again to generate yourself a step. And now you can use the steps to get up top. My first time up here, I was positive there would be a collectible, but there is not. Instead, go around the loop here. Interact with the orb in order to move some of the rocks that we went by. Now you can backtrack a little bit here. You will be, I believe you're blocked from leaving, but you are able to now come down this newly opened path to find a new perspective on the shipwreck. You should be able to line up some symbols here to create the final part of our door puzzle. With the entire symbol done now, let's return to the door and proceed to continue the chapter. Head back to the path, take a left-hand turn. You should be able to drop down the ledge here. It's a double drop now, but you should be able to connect all the way back to the main door without having to use the orbs at all. And at this point, you can just pretty much walk right through the door in order to continue. They are letting her in. She has found it. What is this place? Where are you? What does it mean? Where are we? This power she feels draws her on. The certainty. She wants to hold it. Even if it blinds her. She's come to them again with another promise, another question. But there will always be that price to pay. The truth can drown you deep. They bear the heart of you, hidden for years. It hurts. Down there, see the water. Where? What does it mean? She has to go down again. And what will be there waiting for her? Be alert, so we'll be careful. a man we will show you look this underwater section is also a part of the same checkpoint we've been playing called another reason the section after this is also part of that same checkpoint so if you were to miss a collectible now there is quite a bit of replaying to do but this is another one of those memory sections where we are just moving through the blue lights and allowing some of the backstory to play out about the other giant here. Just continue following the blue lights and allowing the memories to play out until this section is over. But then the giants came and the Droigar. friends, but he feared the men more 
offered a bloody bargain. He agreed. He would, by trickery, make over his leader to them. And in return, they would not trouble him. We now regain control of our character. We are still in the same checkpoint called another reason or another question. And luckily for us, some of the final collectibles we need are right around the corner. So let's go ahead and grab them and get some achievements popping. You'll run up and around the corner to your right. You will see the giant at the end of the path here, but I believe it is a little bit of a uh, vision. Halfway down the hill, you'll pass one flame on your right and then a flame on your left. And halfway down this hill, just past this post, you can take a right-hand turn into this kind of small fenced-in barn area. At the end of this area, you can find your second-to-last face. Interact with it, finding the tree inside. Speak of warriors who can transform themselves into bears when they are enraged. Their skin becomes hide so thick, no sword or spear can break it. When King Hlofer fought Skold, many people saw a great bear fighting beside him, who killed more men with its paw than any five soldiers. All right, so let's leave. And nearby, we can find our final lore stone, which is good news as it does unlock an achievement for us. Head back to the main path and take a right-hand turn here. At the bottom of the hill, instead of going forward, let's take the path that forks to the left. This will go up a little bit of an S-curve and up the hill. And on the final curve you should find the lore stone directly in front of you. Activating it, assuming you've kept up, will activate the final piece, unlocking your achievement. Brave and fine deeds brought him misery. 
So fate makes prisoners of us all. But it was Grettir's nature that made him fight the Droiger. And Grettir's nature that led to blood feud and exile. So what is truly our prison, Senoa? Is our path ordained, and we powerless to change it? Or do we blame uncertain powers for what we ourselves ordain? And luckily for us, next to this lore stone is also our final face path. After this face path, we'll also do a quick achievement check. I'll explain what's left. So just keep going a little bit past the lore stone. Keep going past the house. Do not go to the right as that starts a cutscene that will lock you out of this area. But as you come around this corner, look to your left. This is one of the more well hidden ones. Unlocking the face path itself unlocks the achievement for you right away. I'd highly recommend interacting with the tree either way. But we are at 625 out of 1000 now. And there are some progressional story-based achievements left, as well as one small miscellaneous task, which I will show you at the end of the walkthrough. But interact with the tree for now. Men here will tell of how Jarl Harkon worshipped the giant Thorgerva and sought her aid in the middle of battle when the tide was turning against him. Fleeing to an island, he pleaded with her for aid. She demanded a sacrifice. She rejected all of his offerings until he at last killed his own son in sacrifice. Thorgerva gave aid, and Hakon's enemies saw the giant striding amongst the ships. Arrows flying from every finger and never missing their mark. Their morale was sapped, and Harkon won his battle. Now that we have all the collectibles done, let's go ahead and continue the chapter. Head back to this main path behind us. Head down the hill a little bit in front of us. You'll notice that there is a house off to our left near some flames. Interacting with this house starts a cutscene and begins the next checkpoint of the chapter. What were you searching for? The truth. The truth. You need to find out, Paul. Sonora. Ask her. Steady. Take your time. Tell her. Your father. There. That's it. You told me that someone betrayed him. Who? Who was it? She has to tell us. She will. Why? I need to know his name. What does it matter? The truth. It is how we will save our people. I need to understand him. Please. You need to know. You must know. Tell me what happened. We cannot kill the giant if we do not know. She's going to tell us. She trusts us. Look. No, she doesn't. She's ready. There. The question hurts her. She will do it. When it all went to hell, people started coming to us for help. We were just barely scraping by, but she doesn't like to remember. We opened our doors to them. She's trying to help. Even as the food was dwindling, and the Björk grew more demanding. It's hard for her to say. Little by little, this settlement became my tribe. Just Her. like yours. Remember. You had a home once. And then a man came. And we took him in. We made him one of us. That man. We trusted him. What was his name? And he betrayed me. He betrayed my father. Him. There is more to this than she is saying. 
so I cast him out. I haven't seen him since. <laughs> His name was Saikir. He is your giant. What will she do? Will she believe us? I saw it. She has to. How? You have to trust me. It was the same with Inga. I saw her. I learned her name. Something's coming. This cinematic concludes in a combat section, so just make sure you succeed in the battle. No matter how well you do, some of the events of this fight are scripted, but try your best nonetheless. You have to help this Emma. This is choice. What are you doing lying down? Get up and fight! Defend people!
bring it to everyone you meet. Blood. Death follows you. Senua! Are you hurt? You don't deserve her help. Don't show her. Don't let her in. She sees us. She sees what you are thinking. She needs you to be strong. Can we? No. Can you be? No. We need a plan. Depends on the plan. Go, go with her. She is too kind. She's brought them here, the hungry ones. She made them fight, the ones who died. And there's only one way to atone. Go forward. Go on. Steal yourself for what's to come. name. I can draw him into the sun. The sun never shines where Selvarisn walks. He brings the clouds with him. There's a way to part the clouds. We must perform a ritual to honor the sun and draw a soul from wherever she's fled and beg her help. Vagrima. Yeah? Find the site for the ritual. 
We will go to the cave and wake the giant with fire. Then lure him there. He may look slow, but he moves fast. Our people will slow him down. Then I will speak his name and hold him fast. And bring him into the light. Now that was quite the lengthy cutscene. There's going to be a little bit of gameplay sprinkled in here, but we do have a plan together. We are trying to get Siavarisi, I believe his name is, this giant to leave the cave. This is the giant that is bringing death and darkness to this settlement. We're going to try to bring him out of the cave, perform the ritual of the sun to make the sun shine and defeat him. So the gameplay here is pretty simple. For now, we are going to walk forward and pretty much just at the end of the path, we will reach yet another cinematic. Farik. After the cutscene here, you will regain control of Senua, and the gameplay, for the most part, is running away to the outside of the cave. You will take some a few breaks here and there, where you take control of a fire weapon, use the X button to throw that weapon towards the giant uh, when prompted, and then continue running out of the cave.
know you. He needs you. Similarly to the previous boss battle, during the Ritual of the Sun here, we will be transported into a kind of alternate dimension. And here is where the next boss battle will take place. So what we need to do to start the boss battle is to go to the Eye of the Storm, which is the storm right in front of you as you spawn here. This will commence the next boss battle against this next giant. And defeating them should help us complete Chapter 5 pretty soon here. So just continue until you get to the storm for now, and then I'll talk about the boss battle itself. Now, as you approach this stone in front of us, the mechanics will be very similar to the previous boss battle. You'll see that water comes rushing in, and that is a danger to us. It's going to be on a bit of a timer. In order to stay safe, you'll need to go up to these rocks, interact with the loops, and hold on until the water rushes through. After it rushes through, you can go to the next rock, and again, hold the ring until the water rushes through. Generally, when the screen blinks red, that is when you're free to move on to the next rock. You're going to continue doing this until you finish the first and second phase. I believe after that, it kind of continues doing the same thing. However, the rocks will only work one single time before they are destroyed. So you will need to be a little bit faster in between some of the rocks. Here you will have to go under the boat. And if you do get stuck at any point, there isn't too much risk here. If you get stuck and the water sweeps you away, unfortunately, all you'll have to do is redo a couple of the rocks. There will be a rock here where you may not know exactly where to go, but generally you're going in that same direction the whole time. If you don't see where you're supposed to go, just keep heading in that direction and you'll get there eventually. We then reach this part over here, which is enough above the sea line that we don't need to hold on when the water comes sweeping in but we will need to on this next one here. The timing on this one can be a little bit more awkward just because you have to slide down the hill, but just continue the same mechanics until you get further and further. As you come to this area, keep sprinting up the hill. I don't know if on harder difficulties it matters, but from what I've noticed, if you do get hit by the things falling from the sky, you can take damage, but I'm not sure it can result in a death. You'll see the shadows of the items falling from the sky on the ground, so you're able to dodge left and right as they are falling. Just continue running in that same direction though for now.
You don't want to hurt them again. He was lost, and you found him. You brought him here. Home. Um, now he can rest. Rest now, Saika. Poor Senra. It's too much. Too much for her. All the grief. All the death. The others. Their pain. It's too much. She, she can't, can't do it. it. Not alone. But she isn't alone. Is she? Another haunted spirit given peace. Another victim of the ravaged land now rests. A promise kept. But the lives lost in calming the storm, they cut deep. It weakens you, each death. Does it hurt you? She doesn't. Can you keep going? She is so hurt. Yes. She needs to see. The biggest fight is ahead. Always. The giant of Borgavarki is strong. We are But strong. I believe in you. Together. I want the bloodshed to end. Are you ready? He will stop the sacrifices. And she will. Yes. Them, I promise. to see the path herself clean and clear and find the strength to follow it even as dead hands pull her back she has to find the light within and hang it in the sky to guide the others we've been successful in defeating Siavarisi and releasing the soul of Segir during this boss battle. And after this cutscene concludes, we will more or less move on to chapter six. There will also be an achievement that unlocks to let you know you've made some story progress. And there is about an hour left in the game. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop a like, share the video with a friend. Special thanks to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. Peace.